Hi, Amy394. So some of you in your project proposals, one of the things that I uh, saw from several of you was a desire to uh, look at some different kind of VJ setups and some of the ways that we might approach that. And specifically addressing the concern of how do we bounce between multiple types of this kind of live generated stuff, right? Because we've certainly looked at how we might bounce back and forth between uh, different kinds of uh, videos that are set up or just pictures that might set up. But what happens if you want to build a whole network and you want to be able to kind of bounce around back and forth between several different uh, generative setups? And how do you make that work? So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to kind of walk us through the kind of nuts and bolts of how we're going to do that. And this isn't anything that you have to use, but this is certainly a technique that you can choose to take advantage of if you want to. Okay, so this is where we're going. I'm going to refer back to this a couple of times because this is a little more complicated than some of the other examples that I've done, but hopefully we'll be able to work our way right through this. All right, so to get started, let's go ahead and fire up a new network because we're going to go ahead and build this right from the ground up. Now, what we're going to do uh, once we open this thing up is first I'm going to get rid of this palette browser because I like to have as much real estate as I can. And we're just going to go ahead and get rid of all of the things here inside of this network. So now right out the gate, right, we're inside of container or inside of project one here. Uh, and we've got an empty network. And we're going to need a couple of different things to get started. We're going to need some buttons. Uh, and for right now, we're going to start with just one button. And then we're also going to need a container. Excellent. All right. So this container, I'm going to go ahead and call this module one because uh, I'm going to treat this as the kind of module where I'm going to build a visuals network. And my button over here, I'm going to go ahead and change this a little bit. Um, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change this to viz. Well, let's call it visuals. And actually, let's do this. Let's use a value. And the value that we want to use is me.parent.digits. I'm going to do word wrap because I like to have that. It looks tidy. Um, I don't want any of the decimals. Perfect. So now I know that as I make copies of this, um, we'll go ahead and see that kind of propagate, right? So if I like copy it, we'll see it's two, three, four. And this button here, I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to make it a clone of itself. Oops. It's not what I wanted to do. This guy is who I want to make a clone over here like this. And we can get rid of the clone value there. Excellent. And what we're gonna, the way that we're gonna approach this is we're gonna think of our buttons as being um, kind of whole containers for scripts. We're gonna run some scripts inside of these buttons every time we click on them to help execute a few different things for us. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this is set to momentary. I don't need it to toggle down or anything like that. And in this particular case, I just want it to be a kind of momentary fire. All right. Next up, here in Module 1, let's go ahead and build a real simple uh, 3D render. So I know I'm going to need a camera. I know I'm going to need a light. I need a piece of geometry to actually look at. right? So geo light and a camera. I'm also going to go ahead and throw in a material here. Um, because as we get started, we're going to kind of uh, get started here in a little kind of uh, in a way that doesn't seem too sexy. And as we kind of progress, then we'll start to see how it starts to get a little more exciting. I'm also going to need a render top. And then to top it all off, I want to make sure that I end all of this in a null. And we'll see why that's important in a second. Well, not quite a second, but in a bit we'll get there. Right, because really what I want to have is I want to have a null at the end of all of this. So if I want to make any changes inside of this network, I can, I can do that in some interesting way. Okay. Excellent. So far, nothing exciting is happening yet, right? So I know in here I've got this guy going on, but I'm not going to display it on the outside of this container yet. I don't need that. Um, so what What am I missing? What's, uh, what's going on here? Well, uh, what I'd like to have happen, right? Let's go ahead and make a copy of these guys. Uh, let's make two copies, right? So I've got two, three, and four. Why not? I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the color of these are different. So I've got a red one, an orange one. Let's change the color of this one to be something different altogether, yellow. Essentially what I'm after right now is I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that in setting up 
my network, I can see some visual differences between uh, all the different modules that I've built. I'll worry later about what kind of fancy things I want to do inside of them, but right now I need to make the plumbing work. So ideally what I want to have, right, if we look back at this other one real quickly, we'll see that I would like to have two different things that I'm selecting constantly, right? I want to have either one of these available and I want to crossfade when I click on one of these buttons between the two of them. So here I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I add uh, a few different selects. I need two to be precise. We've got select one and two. I need a cross because I want to be able to crossfade between the two of those. Oops. Perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach that to a null. So I've got a kind of termina termination, a kind of place where all that ends. And I'm going to leave that over here to the side. Okay. So, um, if we look at this, let's go ahead and split our control panel here, right? Because we can start to kind of get a sense of what it is that we're up to. So I want to be able to drive this guy over here. Great. And I want to be able to drive this guy over here. Even better. And then I want to make sure that I can, let's get in a little bit closer. Right, that I can crossfade between the two of those. And I've got a nice kind of seamless transition, zero to one. So I need a few other things to make that work. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a constant, because I like to have a constant for this. I want a speed. And I want a null also, because I always like to end in a null. Because that way we know if we need to make any changes upstream, we can do that. So the idea is going to be that we're going to change the value of this constant, right? Zero to one. And it's going to drive this animation um, that moves us from one of these to the other. So we can see here that our speed is doing a tricky thing, right? Our speed go goes ahead and it increments forever. So how can we change that? Well, let's take a closer look at our speed. So what I can do is I can set the limit type to be clamp with a maximum value, or excuse me, a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of one. I'm going to go ahead and reset the min max here. There we go. This is looking pretty good. So now I've got, I can ramp up to one, and if I put a negative one in here, I can ramp down to zero. So I can play this game. I roll up, I roll down. Oops, negative one. I go out the other way. Let's go ahead and reset this guy also. So I'm going to use my null to drive that here in my cross. All right, that's the idea. Is that this me becomes one, and we go to we transition to two here, and this is negative one. Oops, not negative forty one. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. One and negative one. Negative. We need actually a number in there. Right, that's the idea. That's what we are going to try and make happen. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to write some scripts that do two things. First, we're going to make sure that we can uh, change these guys. We can change our selects based on which button gets clicked. And then we're going to make sure that we can also change this value when that button is clicked. And we'll see how we're going to do that. We're going to use a little bit of logic here. Um, we haven't talked a lot about logic a whole lot, but hopefully this will be an example of how this is can be pretty interesting and powerful. Okay, so we're going to dive right here into our visuals and let's add a panel execute dat because this is where all of the magic is going to start happening for us. We can get in closer here. Uh, like before, we're going to use select. That's the panel value that we're going to rely on. We're going to worry about on to off. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of these other ones at the bottom because we don't really need them. We're not going to rely on any other elements here. So this is where we're going to write all of our very exciting stuff. And first off, what I want to do is I want to define select one and select two. Um, because I want to there are a couple of those things that I need to have access to, right? I need to define some of the, the variables that I'm going to use on a regular basis. So select one is oops, the operator that's a level above me, and it's called select one. 
That seems pretty easy. S2 is select 2. Great. Uh, we're going to call our constant over here. Let's call that trans, because that's the thing that makes the transition happen. And that's the operator that's a level above us called constant 1. Great. And those are really the three things that we're going to need to know, right? We need to know this guy. We need to know our selects. Excellent. So now we need to think about some logic, right? So let's pause for one second and just kind of talk through what it is that we're up to because we're, we're wanting to play a kind of tricky, fun thing, right? So for example, when I click on visuals one, I want that to bounce into one of these two things. And I'm gonna, I want it to go into the corresponding select that is not currently displayed, right? And let's think about that a little bit, right? So here, the red one, the, our red torus is currently being displayed. So whatever button I click on, I want to make sure that the, our um, target torus, right, the thing that shows up here in this other one, or the, the render thing that shows up, needs to be in the slot that's not currently displayed. Right, because if I put it in select one, then I'm going to get a hard cut between the two different visuals. And I want to have a nice soft blend between the two of them. So the first thing I need to do is I need to take uh, what's in module three and I need to put that over here. Right, and we can do that by hand. So I want to first populate this with uh, my other visual. And then I want to go ahead and change this value so that I make a nice, simple crossfade between the two of them. All right, pretty straightforward. But now, let's say that I click on Visuals 4. When I click on Visuals 4, I need it to go into Select 1, because Select 1 is currently uh, the visuals that's on standby. So this then should be 4. And then I need to populate this with a negative 1 to create a crossfade that pushes us back here to 1. Okay, so we can solve this problem with a little bit of logic. And you're going to love this. Before we get too far along, we need to write, we need a few other things in here that slipped my silly little brain. Uh, first, one of the first things we need to know is we need to have a way to populate this field right here with a string. Now, we did that before. We kind of have a sense of how that's going to work, right? Um, so let's think about what we need to be able to change in here, right? So it's really, so far, it's just mod, it's this guy right here that changes, right? Excellent. Now, uh, as happenstance has it, in this particular case, um, we're not, like before, we actually had the thing that lived inside of our button. In this case, it lives someplace uh, someplace else. So we need to, uh, we can kind of get at this by thinking about the fact that we're really only changing the number. And our numbers, visuals one and module one, correspond with one another. So let's go ahead and rely on that fact for this particular case, for this particular um, example, right? So in this case, uh, we're going to formulate a string, and let's call this target. And we want this string to be module, and we're going to add to that my parents' digits, and then we're going to add to the end of that, we need a little bit more, we need to add null 1 to the end of that, and we need a slash, and we also need a slash here, Joink. right, so we need to say, oh nope, excuse me, we don't want a slash there, we want module, the digits, and a null one. Now, let's look at something real fast. Let's print this, because we should get an error when we try and print our target. We'll see. Hopefully, well, yeah, let's find out what happens. Yes, good, we got an error. It, it says, hey, you can't, you can't do that. This, I can't convert this integer into a string implicitly. Like, I, you need to help me. Tell me what it is that you want me to do. So what's going on is that my parents' digits, right? This guy, this one, is actually an integer. It's a whole number. And what I want is I want it to be a string. I want it to be a part of, uh, 
a kind of series of text. Now I need to help uh, Touch Designer do that, and I can uh, accomplish that by saying, make this thing a string. Right, so str means make the thing inside of me a string, parenthesis, the thing I want is a string, and a parenthesis. So now let's look and see what happens when we do that. Aha, okay, so module one, null one, great, that's what I want. And let's just, for fun games and profit, let's go ahead and see if we can, when we click on this, populate select one with that text. So we know that the way to do that would be to say, I want S1, and I want the parameter of S1 that's called top, and I want to make that target. Great. Now it should be when I click here on visuals one, bang. Excellent. And in fact, I can make all of these viewer active, and we could see that, lo and behold, I can change, oops, select one, easy peasy, no problem. Okay, now let's start to think about the logic of what's going to go on here. Because now this is when it gets, it starts to be a little bit more fun. So let's get rid of that for a second. And let's think about the logic that we're going to use to solve this problem. So the, uh, the logic of this is going to rely on understanding what this number is, right? So if I look over here at null 2, I can tell that if null 2 is 0, right? So if this is in the 0 state, then I want to populate select 2 with all of the information, because that's the one that's con on deck. If null 2, however, is at 1, then I want to populate select 2. So let's, uh, well, so we need to know one more thing then, right? We need to know null2. So let's go ahead and add in one more variable. So null2 is going to be the operator that's, oops, and I need parentheses. That's one layer above me. That's called null2. And it's in that I want chan1. Okay, all right. So uh, let's do our first if statement. So if statements have a very particular format, we should see that. So I'm going to say if null2 is exactly equal, so I need equal equal as a sign to zero, colon, and then I need to indent this. So if it's equal to zero, then I want s2 dot par dot top to be trans. Oops, and not that target. I want it to be this thing. Perfect. Else, if it's not that, then I would like s1 dot par dot top to be target. Okay, let's see if we got it right yet. So, okay. Oh, all right. So we're, this guy's value is one, and every time we click on one of these guys, it's always going to select one. It's always going to the one that isn't uh, currently running. Excellent. Okay, so now we need uh, to change a couple other things, right? So not only do we need to change this, we also need to change the value here. So, if we're zero, right, if we're at zero, then that would mean, like, so for example, let's uh, change that real fast. Negative one. Okay. If we're at zero, we need to get all the way up to one. And to make that crossfade happen, that means that trans.par, let's take a look, that's what we called constant one. Right, constant one is called trans. Trans parameter called value zero. Value zero needs to be equal to positive one. When that's not the case, then trans dot par dot value zero needs to equal negative one. Okay, let's see if that did the trick. Oh. 
see if this works. Okay, we crossfade over, we crossfade over, we crossfade over, we crossfade over. Let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and close out this window for one second so we can kind of get a closer look at that. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stay zoomed in on my buttons over on this side, and we're going to take a closer examination oops, of what's happening in our network over here. So what we can see is that when this value is 1, that means that when I click this, the logic of what's going on is that if I click another one of these modules, I need to make this constant here negative 1 in order to drive us back down to 0. So when this value is 0, then I need to populate my constant with a 1. Okay, so what's then happening down here? So that means that when this guy is 0, when null 2 is 0, the place that I need to stack the next visuals is going to be in select 2, right? So we should be able to see that, uh, there we go, so that we stack in select 2. If this is 1, I need to stack over here in select 1, which I've done. And because I'm doing these things simultaneously, I'm now able to kind of seamlessly crossfade between those two things. So now, now we can start to really go, go crazy, right? Because we could do something like, let's close this, uh, and let's take a in look inside of our module, and let's get rid of this silly torus, and let's add a sphere. And the sphere we can attach to some noise. Oops. Not a script, excuse me, to a noise. And the noise we could fix so that um, we could make sure that it's transforming at ab seconds instead. And let's attach that to a null. And we'll use the null to display and render instead. There we go. All right, so now we've got this red blobby thing going on. Let's go in here and let's take this torus. Uh, and let's go ahead and in the geo, let's ha set this to uh, spin a little bit. And where do I want to? I want to. Yeah, I don't want to spin that direction. I want. Yeah, I want to spin that direction. And I'll use me time abs frame to make that spin. Good. So now I've got one that's spinning here constantly. I've got a noisy one. You get the idea, right? So now we can start to really think about how we are. And let's go ahead and view this in the background how we're kind of constantly crossfading between multiple kinds of, or multiple different visual networks. Now there's a limit to how much you can do with this particular kind of a technique, right? Like there's some other things that we have to start to think about. Uh, but we can get away with an awful lot of this before we start to have too many kind of crazy hiccups. So another important thing to remember in all of this, right, is that uh, the way that we've built this, we need one visuals button to match a module button. So if I make another module, I need another button to go along with it. And these guys have got to kind of like stay as a pair. They live together now. We could, if we wanted, we could, you know, kind of encapsulate them in their own network. That would be one way to, to kind of make that a little bit... Um, easier to hold on to, or depending on the complexity of your project, if your project isn't too complex, you can get away with uh, the kind of organization that we've pulled off here. I'm just making a little more space. There we go. So that's how we might look at um, a kind of very basic VJ setup that would allow you to have multiple visual networks going on here that you can bounce between. And in this setup, we can rely on the fact that we've got a kind of crossfade um, system that's set up for us that'll kind of move us seamlessly between the two of these. Now, let's say that we decided that the one second wasn't, uh, wasn't cutting it for us, right? Like, I, I needed to go faster. Well, all we need to do then is we just need to change this value, right? So instead of uh, 1, we could change this to be 2. We probably want this to be negative 2. And this means then that we go twice as fast in those crossfades. All right, guys, I hope that helps. We're going to do the, we're going to actually look at this very thing in class tomorrow. Um, so we'll actually build this as a group, but I wanted you to have this as a reference in case you decided that this was a technique that you wanted to use. All right, happy programming, everyone.